Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we muddle through the numbers and look at the news and try to make sense of this real estate market. And uh, that way you're going to know what's going on. You're going to be armed with all the information. And your big day is coming. Thanksgiving is coming where you're going to be sitting around the table. And somebody's going to say, wow, you see what's going on in real estate? And that's your moment. You're going to grab it. So hit that like button. Um, I really didn't want to talk about Zillow anymore, but I just have to. This news just keeps coming. Not that it's the gift that keeps on giving, but there's some shockers out there. And I just want to share it with you. And today, uh, oh, and it's 7 o'clock tonight. I've got a video that's uh, coming back out and repurposing again, talking about why Wall Street likes these iBuyers and likes Arizona. So be sure and tune in at 7 o'clock. We have 7,427 homes come on or that are on the market today, which is kind of normal uh, for a Monday. I changed and mixed up my chart a little bit, went from a bar chart to a line graph mostly to clean it up because you can see here that the number of contracts the past seven days have exceeded the number of listings uh could be an anomaly it's it's really weird um because here's your normal holiday dips here's memorial day here's fourth of july here's labor day this is supposed to start dipping down for thanksgiving and but i think the institutional buyers out there are ignoring holidays um so we'll just watch this i mean it's coming down you know a little bit here it should make a dip uh inventory historically on holidays also pulls down so we'll just watch it uh not that it's a game changer and it's that significant but it's uh it's the numbers we like to watch the difference between homes available and homes that are going under contracts good old supply and demand um, have a featured listing today it's up in north phoenix up at a beautiful area called moon valley uh, this one's 749. What I like about this is this concept with the windows that open up um, and let the inside become the outside. So I love these uh, these glass doors that just fold out. So I thought I'd show that to you. So what's going on? Um, the iBuyer business continues to thrive. Zillow is trying to get out of it. Uh, they have a little over 200 homes in Phoenix. Uh, they have a thousand homes in our total market this morning that they're that they're trying to get rid of, and it's interesting to see what they're doing. And if we take a look at where they're at based on the October numbers here, um, we see this. We see that um, Open Door purchased 403 homes in October, Offer Pad 178, Zillow 356. Now they stopped buying, um, but they still had homes under contract uh, that they purchased in October. The number to look at here is Open Door had a median purchase price of four hundred fifteen thousand and a median sales price of four hundred fifteen. That's good. Offer pad median purchase price three ninety five and sale price of four hundred thousand. They are the most conservative of the three, and it looks like they're making a little money. But here's where Zillow stands out: median purchase price of four fifty five and a median sales price of four oh nine. Now, this is the Cromford market, uh, makes, a, makes a comment here and said, uh, uh, let's see, it's very interesting. It said, it also seems odd that Zillow would blame their algorithm for many blunders since they clearly deliberately tweaked that algorithm and overestimated the home price would rise in the second, third quarters. Algorithms don't make decisions like that without management input. Now, we touched about that lat on that last week where a Wall Street Journal article basically came out and said that the analysts were going to management saying, um, hey, you know, you're, you're, you're coming in too hot. And they said, that's okay. That's what we want to do. We want people to have a positive experience. So once they have more positive experiences with our home purchase program, we will get more business. We want to make sure that people really enjoy this process. Well, that didn't quite work out like they thought it would. And they had a thing called a gross price override. So the analysts would go in and say this is worth 400 and they would add 7% to that offer. And then they quickly discovered that they couldn't get the help to, to fix up the houses and that they were way overpriced and the homes weren't moving. So now it's panic time and they're selling a lot of their homes to institutional investors like 2,000 homes at a time. When honestly, they'd make more money if they would just sell it on the retail market to you and me and just have a little more patience. But patience doesn't seem to be what they're exhibiting right now. And take a look at this. 
Zillow offers cancels home sale contract on a furious Buckeye couple. They canceled. Remember what all three of these outfits did in March of 2020 when we were all told to stay home? They immediately canceled all their contracts. This couple says they got a call from Zillow offers on November 18th canceling their home sale contract. But they said uh, um, the Millers and Zillow the Miller said Zillow is offering to give them $10,912 before taxes and inclusive of the $1,000 earnest money deposit. So Zillow was going to buy their house and gave them a thousand bucks. And now they want to cancel the contract. And they want to give them another 10 grand. And they were told their contract is being canceled because it goes past January, 2022. What? Well, I guess they just want to clean up the books in uh, 2021. And uh, they were building a new home. And he said, when I challenged the reasons, Zillow offered 10000 if I signed the document before November 30th. Otherwise, I get nothing but a canceled contract. This is where contracts are important, folks. Um, you know, buyers can cancel. Uh, they can cancel for a lot of different reasons. It all depends on how your contract's written. And when they cancel, if they cancel for, obviously, these guys are cash offers, so they don't have a financing contingency. So, but they can still cancel. The only repercussions that they have is that they have to give you back the earnest money. So they only put down $1,000 on a $400,000 house. That's a red flag right there, folks. You should have more skin in the game in case they cancel. Now, it's nice that they're offering ten grand. that will help them. Um, they can put their house back on the market and uh, see if they can get another buyer, which in this market they should be able to do so. But I questioned in March of 2020, when they were canceling all these contracts, I said, I would like to see these contracts. How on earth can they do this? Uh, that's a lot of just out and out, we're out of the game. So I spoke, and you'll see it at 7 o'clock tonight, I spoke about the fiduciary duty um, of iBuyers, and it's to Wall Street. So their first concern is to satisfy their investors and not to satisfy you and I. And uh, they don't have a fiduciary duty to make us happy. But uh, here's some of the math behind their offer here. The market value says $418,000 and they only had a 1% service charge. They used to have a 7.5% service charge. Now they estimated closing costs of two grand. So, you know, that was a pretty sweet offer for them. 418,000 on a 1500 square foot home. Um, and he said he's not sure exactly how many homes Zillow's under contract to buy. He said Zillow offers has 226 listed for sale in Metro Phoenix and another 276 that are pending under contract sale in Tucson. It has 53 listed and 72 pending. I pulled up this morning. I got a number of 1,013. So you can see that they've got a lot of homes on the market. And if you just do a quick look, let's take a look at the one here in Peoria and look at the detail page and see what they're doing here. They Original list price was 337.9. Now it's 337.9. So they're holding the line on that home. This home here, original list price of 361. Now it's 344. So pretty much universally, they've been coming out. They bought a lot of condos and townhomes too. This one, 368, back down to 349. And I want to remind everybody that it's not a fire sale. They're putting the values down to the market value. And uh, so you're not getting it at what I would call a foreclosed price. And even foreclosures aren't that good of a deal, especially in this market where we only have a hundred and some odd foreclosures uh, available on the market. In fact, I can probably look that up for you in a minute. But I think we have 143 uh, foreclosures. And that's like this many. So there's not that many out there to choose from. That's going to be that way for a while. Uh, the Cromford market kind of forecasted mid-month for the rest of the year and said that October and uh, September and October saw significant price increases and they project that it's going to be that way towards the end of the year. But they're also saying that based on the data, that should start to soften now. So we'll see what January brings us. There's a lot of variables out there. One of the things that's not going to be a variable is, is this morning. This morning, Biden announced he's going to keep Chairman Powell as Fred Fed chair, Brainerd gets vice chair. So the markets will like this. They don't like change. They know Chairman Powell. They know that he says he's going to start slowly backing off on mortgage-backed securities this month, probably this week. 
and they're going to start pulling back a little bit in December. So you're going to see some calmness in the market, maybe an uptick in the stock market today. That's not my wheelhouse. I'm just spitballing here. But uh, the more things remain the same, the better Wall Street likes that. So that's good that that isn't being shook up because it's kind of a volatile time to be making any wild swings when it comes to who's driving the bus, right? So don't forget to watch the video tonight at 7 o'clock. And later on, I've got one. I think it's probably coming out tomorrow on fun places to take your family around Arizona that are less than an hour and a half, two hours from town. And uh, while well, you've got all your visitors out here for Thanksgiving. So in the meantime, have a great day. See you tomorrow. Yeah.